Morning, everyone. Welcome to the Solar Racking Market Series. My name is Nick May. Uh, we're here today with Patrick from Powerfield uh, to talk a little bit about their uh, ground mount racking system. But before we dive into that, we're going to wait for a few more people to join in. And, and as we do that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Renvu, uh, about when we were founded, about the services we offer, um, just to get us uh, started here. So Renvu was founded in 2012. We're based in Mountain View, California, which is close to San Francisco, just north of uh, San Jose on the San, Fran San Francisco Peninsula in the Bay Area. But we have fulfillment centers uh, located in the Bay Area on the East Coast of New Jersey, as well as in Texas. So we can reach the majority of the United States in a, a pretty timely manner. Um, our entire sales team is made up of engineers uh, with backgrounds in solar design and battery storage design, which allows us to go into depth on a lot of projects with our customers and, and especially on DIY projects with customers who maybe aren't familiar with a lot of the products. We can talk a little bit more in depth and help you with those preliminary designs uh, before getting into the engineering uh, section of it. Um, as well, we don't just sell products, we offer uh, a few added services. The first one is the Megawatt Club, which allows you to uh, ship anywhere in the United States, continental United States, for a fee of $950 um, for 12 months, that will cover your shipping. As well, like I said, we can help you with those preliminary designs, but we also offer full engineering services and permitting packages, including structural and electrical PE stamps uh, for any of your projects. Um, we have uh, a number of online design tools, the primary one being the Solar Kit Guide, which uh, allows you to come up with a full bill of materials, see what we have in stock, and get a price quote um, that can be done in as little as five minutes. But we have a number of other tools as well, including um, battery sizing calculators, inner row spacing, wire sizing calculators, uh, basically anything you might need for a, a project. Um, we offer financing options as well, uh, both for larger projects and for residential um, through a couple of our partners, Credit Key and Lightstream. Um, you can find those on our website. Um, as well, we've got a few uh, products that I'd like to just touch on in case anybody's interested. Um, we currently have a, a very nice supply of N-Phase IQ7 Plus microinverters um, with very good pricing, and we can offer uh, discounts on, on large quantities for bulk purchases if you have a, a larger purchase you'd like to place. Um, as well, we carry Iguana, which is an AC coupled solution uh, that comes with everything you need integrated for a battery storage with inverter uh, system. They have both LFP and NMC varieties of batteries, and it's expandable up to 42 kilowatt hour storage. Um, we have NLX, uh, which is a Step 2 48 amp car charger. Uh, EV charger that can be used in both residential and commercial settings. Uh, and there are step three, a higher current option um, for the commercial chargers if needed. Solus inverters, um, they've got a wide range of both residential and commercial as well as hybrid inverters. Um, the hybrid inverters we're pairing with BYD batteries uh, for, a, for a nice option. So if you're interested in that, please let us know. Um, the modules that we've decided to go with for the for the remainder of this year and, and for the foreseeable future are going to be long gi and we currently are offering their 450 watt 144 half cut cell module on the commercial side and their 355 watt 120 half cut cell all black module on the residential side um, and we've got very competitive pricing and can offer for both residential and commercial projects um, if interested uh, last but not least, we've got Blicker, uh, which is a residential carport solution, and I'll cover that a little bit more at the uh, end of the presentation today. Um, as well, we are recording this, uh, and we've recorded all of our previous webinars, so if you're interested, check out our YouTube channel, and uh, if you registered or attending today, you'll, you'll wind up getting an email with a copy of this um, presentation as well, just for your reference. Uh, if you have any questions about these products or about Powerfield once we get to the end uh, or during, please just use the Q&A section uh, and then we'll be able to start answering those questions sort of as we go or at the end during the Q&A portion of the uh, webinar. You can always email uh, our sales team at info at Renvu as well if, you've, if you're looking for more information or, or pricing. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Patrick with Powerfield and we'll go from there. Thanks. Thank you, Nick, and uh, thanks to the entire Renvu team for inviting us to present and showcase our product. And thanks to everybody who's on this webinar for taking time out of your day to learn about us, our company, and 
and this racking solution that we're pretty excited about. Uh, Powerfield Energy was founded in 2017 by a team of industry professionals uh, who had been in the renewable space for a number of years working for large organizations doing large uh, renewable projects. And they spotted an opportunity to bring simplicity and savings to the solar market by focusing on uh, reducing the complexity of the racking solution. As you're all well aware, uh, the real magic of solar is happening in the PV module and in the inverter and all along the electrical uh, set up and there's really no magic to the racking system and yet it is still a relatively complex and expensive piece of any any solar project so our solution to that problem is simple in fact the solution is simplicity itself uh, and we designed the power rack so the power rack is our version of a ballasted ground mounted uh, racking system it's fast and easy uh, because of its design, it's very low profile, which makes it attractive uh, for lots of folks. It's robust enough to be permanent, uh, but it's also simple enough to be portable, which adds flexibility and adaptability to the land, to the site uh, for potential reuse down the road. It, it's modular, scalable. It works really well because of its simplicity for small projects. It also works just as well because of its robustness for large projects. Uh, we use natural ballasting material, anything that's readily available, any dry, loose aggregate that's cheap and easy to come by. Uh, we use an HDPE resin that is high in recycled content. It's the product itself is also recyclable. Uh, and it's rugged. It'll last for decades. It'll it'll last as long, probably even longer than the the full life of the system. And of course, it's low maintenance. Uh, we were launched in 2017. Went right into design and and testing. And uh, we put up our first installation um, at the National Renewable Energy Lab in order to do some wind testing there. Uh, so we were in the field there for a couple of years. Uh, in harsh winds and harsh weather, um, and the system handled it all really well. In fact, the system performed so well that NREL just bought that array from us at the end of the testing period, so that array is still there uh, serving NREL's needs. Um, as I said, they, they liked it enough to just acquire that system from us, so that was quite an affirmation for us. Uh, you can see there at the bottom that, that that was the first ever array, but 15 kilowatts went up with just a handful of folks uh, in half a day. Uh, a few months after that, um, really because of the success there at NREL, a, a rural electric cooperative in Colorado that was familiar with what we were doing at NREL, uh, bought a 210 kilowatt system for their own use. Um, so again, uh, we went out there and just with a few minutes of familiarization and training to their staff, they brought some staff and they brought some community volunteers some co-op members that was the crew so just a little bit of training and familiarization and that volunteer crew put up that 210 kilowatt system in just a couple days uh, and we've only gotten more efficient and more effective with our installs uh, since then so so fast and easy uh, and since 2019 we've been we've, we've got a handful of arrays up across the country all kind of word of mouth and a few uh sales um this this year, 2021, is really our first year in the market. So this this is the first year we've really begun to invest in marketing and and uh, distribution partnerships, like with Renvu. Uh, so we may be a, a new name for you, but we're not uh, we're not a brand new company at this point. The installation again is very simple. It's it's really three steps. You set out the racks, you ballast those racks, and you mount the panel. Uh, that's really all there is to it. In that three-step process, the biggest, the most complicated phase is the first one. Uh, positioning the racks exactly where you want them, it really is just a matter of measurement because once you've ballasted them by design, they're pretty difficult to move. That's what they're, they're supposed to stay right where they are. So uh, really setting them in place, you see that measuring tape there, you know, it's not rocket science, it's just a matter of measurement. Um, so that they're right where you want them before you ballast them. That middle image, it's a little hard to see what's going on, but that's a 
side discharge bucket. There are plenty of mechanized solutions to the ballasting, particularly for larger projects. So it's, it's not just a matter of wheelbarrows and shovels um, at the larger sizes. You've got lots of uh, ways to mechanize and automate that, that process as well. So that can be quick. Uh, I want to illustrate, you know, how the rack itself works. This is the, this is the product. Uh, it, in its barest essence, it's a plastic tub. It, it's obviously a highly engineered plastic tub, um, but, but, but essentially that's what you've got. Um, <clears throat> that picture on the right is, is the bottom side of it. We put a tread on the bottom side just to help, you know, increase some friction, uh, keep that rack rooted securely in place when it's ballasted. There are a few holes down there just for moisture management and a little bit of drainage. There's also a hole um, where you can augment the rack with a ground anchor if you wanted additional security. Um, if you were on a slight slope or if you had some other reason you wanted to add a little bit of security, you can use a, a ground anchor in that center hole. Uh, in addition to ballast, um, and that rack's definitely not going anywhere at that point. These are some zoom, some close-ups of the top edge and the bottom edge of the rack. I just want to talk about how the how the PV module is affixed. Um, I'm going to use my pointer here. I'm going to call these pieces tabs. There's a tab here on this side. We're looking. This is a side view. There's another tab over here and a shorter tab in the middle. In the the panel frame, the underside flange of a, of a module frame, which is usually, you know, 25 to 35 millimeters in width, is going to sit right on these tabs and slide right into this slot right here. So you've got three tabs on the underside and then long sections of rack on the upper side that hold that module in place. It slides right into here up against the, uh, a, a, a little wall that is the full width of the rack. So very secure on the high side. On the low side, the, the panel frame is resting on these long, this long shelf along the bottom side of the rack. And then there are two slots in which clips uh, of our design slide into. And this clip here that's in place has two fingers that grasp the flange on the bottom edge of the frame. And so once these clips are in place, you've got four fingers grasping the frame on the bottom side. And this little hole right here, if you can see, we have a security tab that slides into there that I'll illustrate on the next slide. So panel mounting is, is very simple. These are some short video clips. You'll see these two guys lower a module in place. and and it's done. Uh, so again, this the guy on the high side here is setting the panel frame on those three tabs and then just pushing it into its slot. And that's all there is to it. And again, it's resting on the shelf of the rack on the lower side. And then Adam over here is putting what we call a retainer clip or a clip into its slot and pulling it down so that those fingers are grasping the frame on the low side. You're gonna do that twice at each rack. And again, this security tab just fits into a hole in that clip. And what that security tab does is just provide a little vertical edge at the bottom of the frame. That, that tab is not supporting any of the weight of the module. It's just there to secure the clip so that the clip isn't bumped back up again and loses its grip uh, on the module frame. So the, you've got two security tabs, again, on each rack there. And once that's done, that module is um, fully secured. We have uh, our extensive wind testing produced a, a ballast weight calculator. Uh, and eventually, you know, hopefully in the next uh, few weeks or months, we'll, this will be an automated tool that will be up online that any user or customer can wield for themselves. Uh, until that's done, we have the calculator and can do all this for any customers. But if we know the wind speed requirement, the exposure category, and the array layout, we plug those factors into our wind calculator. And what that produces is a ballasting diagram that shows how much ballast, how much weight each rack in the array uh, needs to have in order to secure that array against these wind tolerances. 
Each rack fully ballasted weighs 550 pounds. So at two racks per panel, that's a lot of weight fully ballasted and that's robust against really almost any wind requirements uh, in the continental US. But you can be efficient with your ballasting if we use this calculator because what the calculator will tell you is that the up, most likely the upwind row, the single upwind row, and the outer columns will require a higher amount of ballast, but the middle racks and panels in the interior sections of the array can get away with, with less ballast amount. And so that's the most efficient way uh, to purchase your ballast but is by using this calculator um, and just filling up to those allowances. You, you could always overfill. Uh, sometimes that's easier. Just fill up the racks all the way and then you're you're over ballasted. Now I want to talk a little bit about cost saving. So you, you can see our pricing on Rinvu's website in their catalog now and, and if you have large projects we'd love for you to talk to Renvu or, or talk to us about volume pricing um, at large projects at a, at a megawatt or beyond um, we'd be happy to negotiate um, volume purchases uh, and we're not shy about the fact that on a pure price tag comparison if you're if you're pricing our racks versus some of the other racking systems on the market we're not going to be be the cheapest if you're only looking at the price tag. We're aware of that and, and we're not shy about it. Um, where the savings come into play is deeper in the installation budget. So as you know, uh, if you're penetrating the ground, you often have to have geotechnical engineering completed. Um, that can be pretty expensive. Uh, even if you, you do extensive geotech, uh, you are gonna have some rate of pile refusals. You're gonna hit something occasionally and have a pile refused, sometimes several, sometimes many, uh, in which case you're gonna be spreading concrete footers or some other kind of contingency uh, to secure that rack to the ground. Even for other ballasted systems, oftentimes there's poured concrete or ballasting blocks or other forms of more expensive ballast. Dry, loose aggregates, always the cheapest, uh, always readily available, and that's what you're using uh, with power racks. So with our system, um, you're eliminating or at the very least drastically decreasing uh, those parts of your installation budget. And there are significant savings that come into play there. And on the labor side as well, you all, you, you know your labor costs, you're in, you're in control of your crews, so we won't pretend to, to tell you how to do that. But what we found is uh, using our racks, you should be saving 25%, sometimes as much as 50% uh, in manpower uh, using our racking solution. And so you can send half of that crew on to the next project and they can be installing uh, a power rack system at the next project at the same time. So you're installing twice as many systems and with the same amount of manpower uh, using our racking solution. So that's my presentation. Uh, you know, we, we're bringing simplicity to the solar energy uh, industry. So I wanted my presentation to be simple, give you an overview of the rack, how it works, uh, and that's quick and easy to do. So uh, that um, is the end of my presentation. I'm excited for the Q&A. Uh, uh, after Nick talks about uh, Bleaker for a little bit. So hopefully I'll hear from some of you there. And hopefully we'll be working with all of you on uh, on solar projects uh, in the coming months. Thanks very much. Excellent. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate it. Um, okay, well, let me go ahead and get situated here. And, and so I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, Blicker, a uh, new, new product we've been carrying uh, for residential carport solutions. Um, so as you can see, it's made in the USA. Um, it has a 25-year warranty. It's made out of galvanized steel with marine-grade paint, so it can be utilized in a, in a lot of situations, and it'll stand up um, uh, to the elements uh, wherever it might be, be it near a, uh, an ocean where there's going to be a high salt content uh, or dry areas, wet areas, wherever that might be. Um, very sturdy design. Um, an easy installation. It's designed um, for both installers and DIYers, so it's, it's 
made in a way to try and minimize the heavy machinery that you might um, need to use in other situations for digging uh, deeper post holes, um, for maneuvering and, and placing components up on, on the upper part of the, the system. Um, so very uh, simplified and straightforward uh, installation and design. Um, so light on the tools um, for the actual installation of it. Um, very versatile um, as well. We have set uh, system set up where you can purchase just the uh, rack itself um, and then put in whatever modules, whatever inverter, whatever you might need for the system. Or we sell kitted solutions where we'll include inverters, uh, modules, the NLX car charger, basically everything you would need for a finished system to be installed. As well, you can customize it to be slightly longer. Uh, we would need to do some engineering for those specific situations, or we do offer a single car port, uh, so a single car solution as well. Um, as you can see as well, uh, you can do up to 24 of the 60 or 120 half cut cell panels uh, on the system in a configuration that would leave you an 18 by 18 by nine foot um, surface. There's a lot of uh, add-ons uh, as well that you can get to seal the surface. In this case, there's a tea gasket that will go in and give you a fully uh, flush water sealed uh, surface on the top. Um, comes with a standard five degree tilt. Um, the pier depth is only two feet. So that's what I was talking about earlier for the uh, machinery. You won't need any heavy machinery to dig down six, seven, eight feet for these piers, um, only two feet. Um, it comes with a, a standard snow load of 35 PSF, but can be engineered to upgrade to 65 in specific locations. And the base wind load on it is 130 miles per hour. But um, for places like Florida, where you're going to have those hurricane um, strength winds, can be engineered up to 175, um, which I believe is the uh, requirement for like Miami-Dade County um, for their um, wind speed. Um, let's jump here to the next. Um, so like I was saying, we offer um, kitted solutions. Right now, the primary one that we're offering is the Long E355 all black uh, module, and then uh, the IQ7 Plus um, inverter to go along with that. However, we have a, a lot of options for um, hybrid inverters as well to add storage if you want to do storage. Um, and as you can see on the image there, uh, you can have the NLX car charger, uh, EV charger integrated fully as well with the cabling uh, through the, the piers themselves uh, for a very sleek look. Um, some of the accessories that we offer on uh, as well, there's solar powered lighting um, that you can add on, um, which is maintenance free. You just basically put them on there and, and you've got uh, lighting for coming into that carport. There's that uh, silicone tea gasket for putting in between the modules to, to give you a, a fully waterproof finish on the top there. Um, there's a, a mesh, um, decorative mesh that can go underneath to hide the back of the modules. Um, so you're not seeing the, the back sheets or the cabling or any of the wiring underneath. And, and like I said, the integrated um, NLX juice box, if you have your, your EV uh, that you want to be able to charge right there from the solar batteries or uh, from the grid. Um, we also, also have an authorized installer program for it. Uh, very straightforward. Um, you install three carports, sign the spot program document, um, and then once you've done that, you get a $1,000 rebate for each of those three uh, installations that you've done initially. And then after that, the program offers $1,000 uh, per carport rebate if you're meeting a five carport per month threshold. Although Blicker is pretty flexible right now in the beginning. Um, so if you think you're going to be doing less than that, uh, we can offer sort of flexible um, spa programs in there as well based off, you know, one, two, three installations uh, on a case by case basis. Um, cool. And then last thing uh, I think on here just to talk about is um, the solar kit guide. So there's a little video here we'll go through, but basically it gives you options to look at a number of different grid tied, off grid, um, different configurations if you just want the full system or not. Um, as you're going through, you can choose from the modules that we have in stock. Um, you can go through then. Uh, if you're using your own modules to change out um, the number of panels, the specifications, um, what your electricity bill looks like, um, 
your racking options here. So the carport, just like we were talking about with Bleeker, um, your inverters. Um, in this case, it's choosing the energy storage options to go along with it. If you don't know your battery sizing, you can calculate based off your, your demand and how many sun hours um, you see here we're putting in, uh, what you might, you know, uh, use your, your dryer, your washer, anything like that. Um, if you already know that information, you can just plug it in. You can choose which batteries you want to choose from, lead acid, lithium ion, with the different options that we have, how many you'd like. Um, add on different uh, accessories, EV charger, permitting like I spoke about earlier, whole home energy monitoring, uh, a lot of different, different options. Once you're all done, you get a full bill of materials. Uh, it might not be 100% accurate to your specific situation, but um, it will give you a nice base idea of what your system is going to cost. Um, and then you can go from there uh, and, and talk with one of the sales engineers at Renvu to, to go ahead and um, finalize everything that you might need. Cool. Uh, and that's all I've got. Um, I believe we've got a, a, a number of questions in there. So I'll go ahead and start pulling them up, Patrick, and, and we can go from there. Great. Um, so the first question I've got on here is what size modules work and can you do portrait and landscape? Um, and then how do optimizers and microinverters integrate? Um, so kind of a three-parter there. Yeah, great. No, thank you. That's a great question. So um, we our, our rack design, it's a, as you can tell, it's a single fixed uh, design. So it, it, it's not adaptable or, or adjustable at this point. We're in the process of designing multiple sizes. At the moment, our one size fits uh, most currently available standard modules with a max uh, width dimension of 1,010 millimeters, which is 39.7 inches. So that's not uh, large enough to accommodate some of the newer, larger panels that are that can be like 1035 or more millimeters in width. And I say width because we do uh, only use a landscape orientation at this point. So that width dimension, it becomes the vertical top to bottom dimension on, on the racks. Uh, so maximum panel width of, of 39.7 or, or 10, 10 millimeters. And we do need to have that underside flange of, of at least 25 millimeters. Usually it's about 35 millimeters in order for our rack to grasp it. So we're, we'll be having uh, larger sizes uh, coming out, um, hopefully later this year, potentially 2022 to, to accommodate some of those larger um, module sizes. And what, what was the other part to the question, Nick? Uh, uh, it looks like uh, integrating optimizer. Right. Yeah, so when we do that, what, what customers typically do is use brackets and mount uh, optimizers or microinverters on the frame of the panels. Um, we are a, a, you know, a high density polyethylene and you can, you could drill or screw brackets onto the rack. Um, but if you're gonna use brackets, you might as well use the ready-made brackets that attach to the panel frames. That makes cabling, cabling a little bit easier. That's how we've seen it done up to this point. Great. Cool. Uh, moving on, it looks like next question is Florida wind code is 150 mile per hour. And I know in some, like I was saying, I think it's up to 175 in a couple of instances. Um, and can it handle that um, with additional ballast aggregate? Yeah, a lot, uh, we would plug all that into the calculator and see what it says. Oftentimes with, with high wind areas, what ends up happening is we prescribe a few more racks to, you know, to bolster the upwind row and, and, the, and the outer rows. So you can fit, uh, you could fit two and a half racks per module. So you could have two racks at that, up, at that upwind corner and then a rack uh, splitting the, the, that outer module with the module next to it. That's, that's two and a half racks per that module. Um, and if you interspace enough racks at that upwind row and along the outer edges, then, uh, then you can support those higher wind speeds. So it's all just a matter of the calculator and we, we plug all that data in and, and see what the weight requirements are. Great. Cool. Uh, moving on. Um, so are power rack components available for self-install or do you have to have uh, a power, fall, power field uh, to hire power field to install the system? No, we, our rack is um, very uh, accessible for DIYers. So you can buy the racks or you can buy a kit 
you know, through Rinvu or, or somewhere else where you have the racks, the panels, the inverter, all the other components and put it up yourself. Uh, we have we have a lot of DIY customers already who do it that way. Cool, excellent. And then I think it was actually David who had kind of a follow-up on that, which was, can you buy just the rack? without the panels which you kind of answered yes you absolutely. The racking and do yeah, that's right and we have an installation um manual which i believe is already posted on the renvu site and so that that walks you through every step of the process great okay let's go on to the next one here uh, how important is site leveling i.e if you have an installation over a landfill does soil cover settling affect the installation negatively uh, no, so so our, the system is is um, works very well on on unimproved uh, sites. That w where the where the variability comes into play is if you're using two, you know, our, our most standard layout is two racks underneath each module, and when you do that, there's actually nothing affixing the two panels to each other other than whatever your grounding solution is. And we, we usually just recommend a grounding jumper that gives you some flexibility there. So if, you're, if you have that kind of rack layout, your modules can be uh, offset from each other and that allows you the array to undulate uh, with the surface. If you have a very flat site or if you improve the site, you saw in some of those images that the Rural Electric Co-op did some grading and they improve their site. And what that allows you to do is put a rack at the joint, at the panel joint, and two, two panels are sharing the rack. And that allows you to reduce your rack count, but that requires that site to be very flat in order for those panels to be um, you know, perfectly in line with each other. So, so there's adaptability and flexibility there. Um, and with two racks per panel, um, that array can undulate uh, with the with the underlying surface really well. Great, cool. Uh, next question is a, a Blicker question. Required to be connected to to the grid, or can it be fully standalone, off grid type? Um, so for the um, with the NLX charger, I'd have to double check. But uh, if you're doing it just, you could do it as a fully off grid standalone. Um, there's no issues there. The the rack itself is basically just that a rack, um, and then you can design the electrical side um, to be grid tied, hybrid, fully off grid. Um, basically, any anything uh, it can be capable of. Um, and then next question was tilt angles. Besides, 20, are there any other tilt angles besides 25 degree degree on the uh, power field ballast system? Uh, the the rack is a fixed uh, 25 degree uh, angle. So again, in future design iterations that may vary a little bit, but but right now it's a fixed 25 degrees. And so then the variability then would just be what slope do you have under that rack, uh, and how might that affect the you know the 25 degrees of the rack cool perfect uh, um and then the next question was how is uneven a rolling ground handled uh with a power field product um, which i think you talked a little bit about um yeah. uh, and then what about wire management if there's any integrated wire management um yeah, the, no, that's also a good question. The only integrated wire management is if, if you remember the image of the rack or if you pull it up on Renju, you'll see that there, there are some, there's a bit of a cutout on each edge, each side edge of the rack. Uh, and the cables can run right along that trough really easily. That's also to allow enough space for your hand or your arm to reach up under there if you needed to either fish a cable or, or otherwise you know, reach into that rack once the panel is on there. Um, and that that's enough. Those cables laying across those troughs are enough for some customers. If you want aesthetics to be a little more pleasing or you want to be a little neater than that, then you can, you can use, um, you know, cable management clips on the panel frames. Again, the, other than the trough, there's nothing integrated to the rack itself. Uh, we wanted to keep that simple. So you, you, you can affix cable management clips to your frames if you want to do more than that. Great, cool. Uh, next one's another topography one, but we've kind of already touched base on that. Um, and then next question's about the, the carport looking for um, an installer. Uh, it, Steve, if you want to reach out to info at roundview.com, we can go ahead and, and work with you on, on getting you somebody who can potentially assist uh, on that. 
Um, and then next one's Paul asking about cost. Um, so we, we didn't really talk too much about that, but we, if you want to reach out, Paul, to um, info at Renvu or call in, um, we can definitely talk with you about uh, pricing. Or if you, you register an account on our website, you should be able to see pricing on our website. Um, for power field um, as well. And then I think, like you said, Patrick, larger projects, um, you know, we can have a discussion about, uh, you know, potential pricing uh, for, for any of those larger That's commercial right. or utility projects. Um, and then next, steepest surface power racks can be placed on before needing to excavate. Um, uh, that's a good question. You know, we, we, um, we have not done extensive engineering on slope tolerance. Uh, all our wind testing was done on, on flat ground or, or, or had a built-in tolerance up to only three degrees. Um, as soon as we start talking about trying to engineer slope tolerances, there just are so many variables in terms of what the surface material is, what moisture and precipitation looks like, what temperature fluctuation is. So we haven't gotten into all that yet. So at the moment, we're, we're only able to tell you to sort of certify a, a very flat site um, and then slope tolerance would sort of be up to you uh, or the customer and what you're willing to risk. Um, again, at fully ballasted at 550 pounds and with that tread on the bottom and, and especially if you wanted to use an, a ground anchor in addition, um, I can just tell you that anecdotally that rack's not going anywhere, but I, I don't have engineering data at this point. Um, to be able to certify a, a slope tolerance. Excellent, cool. And then kind of, great. And that kind of piggybacks into this next one, which was about heavy rains and, and flooding um, and, and sort of any testing you might've done on that. Yeah, not, no, no, no official testing yet. Gotcha, cool. Um, okay, I think, let me just check the chat and see if I'm missing anything um, in there. I see one on uh, weights and shipping. Yep. Yeah. Weights, so weights, weights. That's, that's good. Yeah. The power, the empty power rack is only 15 pounds. So it's super easy to handle when it's empty. They palletize at 40 racks per pallet. Um, so they stack and they could stack higher than that. They're actually designed to stack really well without any kind of bowing or anything like that. Um, but we palletize them at two stacks of 20. Uh, which is a 660 pound pallet, um, fully loaded. Great, cool. Um, I think that's all the questions we have right now. Um, if anybody else has any questions, um, you know, you can feel free to uh, email info at renvu.com. Um, afterwards, we will be supplying a recording of this, and it'll be up on our, our YouTube channel, I believe. Uh, but anybody who attended or registered will also get an email um, with a link over to uh, recording this. So definitely, if you have any questions, you can um, uh, email them in or, or give us a call, and, and we can definitely loop in Patrick or, or anyone else over at Powerfield to answer any questions that you might have. Um, cool. Let's see. Okay, I hope oh, we get another one last question. Ground clearance. What is the ground clearance on? Um... For, for our racks? Yep. So th there's zero clearance under the surface of the rack, obviously. I mean, it's, it's, it's fully, it's in full contact with the ground um, along its base. The lower edge of the panel ends up being about seven and a half inches off the ground and the upper edge of the panel ends up being, it's a little over two feet. I think it's 26 to 28 inches. I can't remember exactly. Um, so for O&M, that's, that's oftentimes why people are asking that question. Um, seven and a half inches would be your clearance for a mower or a weed eater or whatever, a sprayer, whatever you're using to, to control vegetation or anything like that um, at, at its lowest point. At the at the downhill slope of the of the module. Cool, perfect. Um, and then I think we had one other person who was trying to raise their hand, um, but I don't know that. Let me see if they can get it here. Okay, Peyton should be allowing it here, real quick. Um, and then I think they'll be able to actually ask their question out loud. 
cool. Yep, there's Foster. So yeah, Foster, I think you should be set if you want to go ahead and, and ask your question. Although, I don't know if Foster can hear us. Well, in the meantime, uh, there's another question that, that popped in from Gary about uh, interact row spacing um, and what the sort of standard there is. Yeah, so for, because we're so low to the ground, and, and again, at that high side, we're only um, in the 20s inches off the ground. So there's shading is not a huge issue. Uh, we typically recommend just another, another module width for row spacing, so about a meter uh, in between the modules is typically all you need to prevent shading. And then it's just a matter of uh, maintenance. So again, if you're, if you're on a, a field that has vegetation, then whatever width you need to get a mower uh, through there um, is the only other factor. So I, I'd say at least a meter for shading. And then if you want more uh, for maintenance, then of course you can. Great, cool. And I think Foster was having trouble with their uh, microphone, but if you can hear us Foster and you want to put that question into the Q&A section, uh, we can definitely answer it through there. Um, and if not, you're not able to, feel free to in email info at renvu.com and we can take care of that afterwards without much issue. Um, and then I think Craig threw one. Oh, PE letters. Do you have PE letters for California or I guess any other states? We do. We have, um, <clears throat> we have projects in California and we've gotten through permitting and we've had, we've got stamped engineering documents um, for, for every project that's gotten through permitting so far. Those, those engineering letters are, you know, project specific. So we'd be happy to supply them as examples of, of approved installations. We don't have, a, other than sort of samples of existing projects, we don't have a standard uh, engineering letter for the state of California yet. But at, we, as part of our standard permitting package, we would supply a, a you know, a, a sample stamp letter on a on an existing project. Great, cool. Um, excellent. Okay. I think that's all the questions we've got now. Uh, Foster, if you um, if you want to email that question into info at rambu com, happy to to uh, loop Patrick in and, and be able to answer it um, as best we can. Um, cool. I think the only other thing that um, potentially we just wanted to touch base on, and it's something where you can take a look at for upcoming commercial projects, um, is our commercial price list, um, which should include, if it does not already, power field. Um, so I'll just share my screen real quick so you can take a look. And this will go out to um, to everyone as well uh, in the email link, but it has pricing for commercial projects up to 10 megawatt uh, and higher um, for both modules, uh, energy storage solutions, and then racking options as well. So uh, there's different uh, sections down at the bottom. Um, so that link will also go out uh, with everything as well. So you can take a look there and um, and let us give you kind of a, a good idea of what pricing might look like for a commercial project you're working on. And, and then we can start talking about the specifics and details on it um, after that. Um, let's see if we got one more. I'll stop that sharing real quick. Got one more question. Oh, uh, digital lithium batteries available yet? We'll go ahead and, and uh, if we'll touch base on that afterwards, Steve. Um, uh, since it's a little different topic, uh, but we will have uh, access to all these questions afterwards, and then your contact info, so we can go ahead and, and reach out to you after the presentation here and and talk to you a little bit more about uh, different battery chemistries and options that are are coming out. Um, cool. Well, I think that's a, a good spot for us to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, thank you again, Patrick, for the presentation. It was great. Um, happy to be working with Powerfield and, and happy to be able to have this presentation for everyone. Uh, if anybody has any questions, again, feel free to reach out to info at renvu.com or you can call in uh, to our number at 855-755-5855. And we're happy to talk to you, answer any questions and, and work on any, any projects you might have coming up. 
Uh, okay, I think that's it. Appreciate uh, everybody attending. I appreciate you, Patrick, and uh, we'll see everyone later. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nick. Thanks.